Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm here in my backyard in the Appalachian Mountains in Virginia at about 2,700 feet in one of my patches of common milkweed that I've cultivated. I've cultivated this common milkweed specifically for monarch butterflies. It's the only thing that they'll feed on. And this episode has some good news and bad news. I'll do the bad news first. The bad news is that the Eastern Monarch Butterfly is now on the IUCN Endangered Species list. And that's bad news because the population's in decline. The good news is that perhaps with this designation, we'll be able to get into a more systematic approach to addressing the monarch migration phenomena and this endangered event and this endangered organism. And we can get more people engaged and involved in helping protect them. This episode is gonna be a little bit about the biology of the monarch butterfly, their extraordinary migration, some of the reasons why they're endangered and some things that you can do to help it. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. We can begin by taking a look at the life cycle of the Eastern Monarch Butterfly, beginning with these tiny eggs that they're barely the size of a pinhead. And they kind of look like a football with the bottom flattened and pushed against the leaf. And then coming to a point, and you can see these vertical striations going up and down the sides. These butterflies only lay one egg per plant. They lay their eggs singly. And that's so they can be sure that there's plenty of milkweed available for this caterpillar when it hatches out. This is different from other butterflies who often lay large masses of eggs in a single spot in a tree where there's unlimited leaf resources. These eggs will hatch in three days and the tiny larva will begin eating just the surface of the leaves. They'll grow rapidly over the next 21 days. And during this time, they'll pass through five stages known as instars, which represent the five moles during the growth of the caterpillar. And they'll gain over 2,000 times their original weight. The fifth instar caterpillar, after its final moat, will hang upside down in a state known as a J larva. They attach to the underside of a leaf by a silken pad that they have spun. They'll shed their outer skin and shake it off and reveal the skin of the chrysalis. The chrysalis itself is remarkable and it's bright green with these amazing gold dots on it and uh, dark black spots. After 10 days in the chrysalis, on the very last day, the chrysalis will seem to turn black as the wings gain color and are now visible under that thin chrysalis epidermis. The adults will emerge and the males can be identified by these thin lines with a black spot on their inner wings and the females have only thick lines on their lower inner wings as well. During the summer months the eastern monarchs will go through several generations often advancing north with each generation and following the emergence of milkweed as it starts to sprout and move northward following the spring. When day length drops to below 13 hours per day, the adults will no longer reproduce, and in fact, they'll enter a state called diapause, where they do not develop sexual organs, and instead will produce fat deposits that will sustain them over this journey that may reach up to 3,000 miles. So all the monarchs east of the Rockies, from Canada to Flo Florida, will start to migrate to this place in the transvolcanic mountain range of Mexico. This was only discovered in the late 1970s. We didn't know where they were migrating to. In Mexico, it's tradition around this time to celebrate the Day of the Dead. And the butterflies are believed to be the souls of people who have passed away in the past. And the migration coincides with these Day of the Dead celebrations. The monarchs west of the Rockies will migrate to a place near San Diego and overwinter there. 
So efforts are also being made to preserve these oil tree forests in the Transvolcanic Mountain Range of Mexico at about elevation 7,000 feet. These forests function as a sanctuary for these monarchs, protecting them both from freezing temperatures and very high temperatures. They need a low temperature to maintain their metabolic rate at a very minimal level without freezing. If the canopy of the trees opens up or too many of these trees are cut down, the butterflies can freeze to death on cold nights or in winter storms. Conversely, on hot days, if the canopy is opened up, they can warm up too much, their metabolic rate increases, and they can use up all their fat deposits before they can make that return flight to Mexico. These monarch butterflies that survive the overwintering in the transvolcanic mountain range in the spring will return to the southeast of the United States and lay eggs on the first milkweed they find and that generation will die. The succeeding generations will keep moving north with springtime and following the emergence of milkweed in that pattern until they get to the northern limit of the milkweed range which is actually in Canada. Again, once daylight drops to 13 hours per day, the migration event will begin and this whole process will reproduce itself. So in addition to the risks to the monarch population in their winter saturary in the Oymile forest in the Transvolcanic mountain range of Mexico, monarchs are also very sensitive to habitat loss, overuse of pesticides, and weather pattern changes and droughts caused by climate change. So what can you do? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is you can plant some milkweed like this in your yard and in your gardens, as well as other nectar producing plants that the adult butterflies can feed on when they're migrating and when they're preparing to lay eggs. The other thing you can do is learn more about monarchs. And two great places to do that are on websites called the Journey North and also monarchwatch.com. You can even write to Monarch Watch and order a set of tags and tag monarchs that are migrating yourself and contribute more to this research as well. So learn more, find out more about why they're endangered, what they need, what systemic changes we need to make as a society to help protect this endangered species and many others. Also check out my Monarch Butterfly playlist on my YouTube channel where I go into detail on almost everything we've talked about here today. From do-it-yourself bug boxes and cages to temporarily house adults and milkweed plants during this process. It's a great educational activity for kids to see the whole monarch butterfly metamorphosis life cycle. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door, and I hope I've inspired you to plant a butterfly garden, particularly with milkweed like this one, in your garden to help with the monarch migration phenomena. Remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all sorts of things from insects, and plants, and amphibians, and reptiles, and mushrooms, and much, much more. Check out my playlist to see if I've got something that you might be interested in on my channel. But thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.